Okay. Okay, thank you all for going ahead and attending today's uh, webinar or this session of it. This is my third one today. Um, is about how to do events, um, how to do them well, what to have, um, how to do the planning on them, um, how to maximize your time. Uh, I've had a lot of you that have asked questions about that, and I see a lot of you who are brand new to me. Um, so let me do a formal introduction real quick. Um, my name is Amanda Bruton. I am the owner of Medicare Answers Now, which is a FMO based in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, we have agents across 40 states and a um, little bit about me. I've been doing this for 17 years. I absolutely love what I do. I'm known for the education and the training that uh, I disseminate throughout the agent community. I am also... Um, Cool thing that happened last year or happened last month was is that I was awarded the Educator of the Year by our professional organization, uh, National Association of Benefit and Insurance uh, Professionals, NABIT. So I'm super excited about that. And then other things that you need to know about me uh, is that one, um, I am a part of the Medicare advisory group that NABIP has. Um, that is a select group of 15 um, insurance professionals across the country who work directly with CMS, with Congress and various levels of legislation. And we are your voice um, to talk about what's happening in the agent community. So if you feel as though you're unheard, this is me telling you, oh, you're not, honey, because I am taking everything that I hear between the Facebook groups that I have, um, all the social media that I do. Right now, I think my count this year is I've been in front of almost 5,000 agents to date. Um, I do a lot of in-person training as well as web-based training, uh, and everything that I do is free, um, which many of you know. So a lot of new faces today. Welcome. Um, I hope that you sit back, enjoy the ride as we go ahead and we have this conversation today. Um, other things that you do need to know is that um, I do three conferences every year. Um, the first one that I do is the uh, Medicare Margaritas. Medicare Margaritas is a co-ed event that I do, so it is open to everyone. Um, this is waitlisted for next March, but it is done. It's actually in uh, Orange Beach, Alabama, which is the Pensacola Gulf Shores Destin Fort Walton area. Um, this one is a set of, it's over three days. Again, it is free, and it is two two-hour deep dives each day, plus um, social events that allow you to network up with other agents that do what we do, the carriers and the vendors that um, candidly have been vetted by me, because I'm very careful with who I put in front of you, and uh, it allows you to really sink your teeth into given topics. So um, last year was the first year that we did it. It's vacation-themed. Uh, I theme everything. In that particular event, uh, we had one on goal setting and staffing. We had another one about back office supports and systems. We had another one about how do you build a business plan or how do you build a marketing plan and social media. We had one about cross-selling. What products should you have in your portfolio and what makes sense for you to develop as you move forward? So that one, um, the website to check that one out is just like it sounds, medicareandmargaritas.com. Um, you do want to get on the rate, the wait list with that one, just because, um, there, we will, we're this far out that we will have people that will, um, cancel. And typically as those seats open up, then you have two days or three days to be able to register for your seat. The next conference that I do is now going into its fourth year, which is Ms. Medicare. We just finished that one uh, not even three weeks ago. Ms. Medicare is my women-only event, um, and that one is a take on Ms. Congeniality. It is focused solely on showing you women role models in the industry and the different tracks that everybody has taken, their stories on how they have been as successful as they have in their journey with that. It focuses on networking and the social side of it, how to build your business, and also 
all the other things that go into that, the self-care, the self-esteem, the mental mess that goes along with it. Um, to find out more about that one, you go to Medicare, uh, Ms. Medicare .ms -medicare .org. Um, I also have a Facebook group by that name, which is now pushing almost 2,700 girls or ladies, pick one, don't get offended because I'm going to offend you left and right just because I'm pretty damn direct. If you get offended by me, you've got to go. Um, I'm as real as it gets. Uh, so that's the Ms. Medicare conference. The third one, which I am super excited about to tell you about is I am working on the creative design of the Medicarians conference, which is going to be held in Las Vegas next April 8th through the 10th. Super, super cool event with that one. So heads up um, it, uh, on that particular event. Um, it will have two tracks, one that is focused on agent and the other one that is focused on agency. And with this particular event, they actually have two sets of tickets that can be free or um, they're a hosted agent. And you can apply for those so that you don't have to buy the ticket, but you still get the content. You can attend the free day. You can attend some of the social things as a hosted guest or a hosted uh, agent. And with that particular ticket, you just meet with a couple of the vendors and sponsors that are there. Um, they anticipate to have between 2,500 to 3,000 people there. And I will be for, we will be formally announcing all the details and many of the, of the, the, the speakers um, in the beginning of September. And again, the dates on that one are April 8th through April 10th, and that will be in Las Vegas. You can find more information about that particular event. It is called Medicarians. So that's a little bit about me. Okay, and I think I bought enough time that I had another like 30 people enter in, which is great. Um, so my first thing that I wanna go ahead and talk to you about is that, um, let's start with the event stuff um, and first scheduling, right? When you schedule events, so right now I have tasked my downline to go ahead and get out in the agent community and or get out in the their local communities and do social events. And many people think I'm insane for that because the question becomes, why the hell would I do a social event? I can't write an app at a social event, so that's a waste of my time. I want to go ahead and I want to be able to walk away with a handful of applications and be done with that. Guys, if you are thinking about this as though it is a transactional sale, this is me saying to you, you are in the wrong business and you have a really wrong attitude when you are working with seniors. OK, when you're working with seniors and when you are looking at doing this, you are primarily doing what's referred to as a consultative sell. It's problem solving. The senior doesn't know what they don't what to ask you for. They don't know much about what it is that you've got going on or what the options are. Many of the areas that you guys live in have it where the plans that are available, you may, like in my county, we have 72 Advantage plans to choose from. That means that add in the med subs and the Part Ds, there are literally over a hundred different options that somebody needs to make heads or tails of when it comes to this. They don't know what they need. They don't know that, okay, there are there are plans out there that can help them with their utilities and with their groceries and with their dental and with all those other things that we know, right? So in my Facebook groups and then how this particular class came to be is, is that I had about 12 threads in the matter of three days with the same question. What do I do in events? What kind of event should I be doing? How do I do my table? And uh, how do I do this? So that's where it was like, okay, let's go ahead and let's do a quick meeting to talk about this and give you some ideas, right? So 
One of the things that you want to do and why I say that social events are huge is that this is something fundamentally that, that agents don't really take a look at. Seniors are adults. We know this. I mean, this is the dumbest statement that I can make, right? Seniors are an adult, which means that we look at them and treat them as though they are an adult. They are a functioning adult in that, okay, well, you should be able to take care of yourself. You should be able to remember things. You should be able to go to your doctor's appointments, to remember that you need to take your medications, all of those things. And the reality is, this is that that isn't happening. As we get older, your memory goes ahead and it goes downhill. You forget things and you become isolated. I don't know if many of you have gone ahead and you stay aware of friends um, in the demographic, uh, but I do. Um, it's part of my job as an educator, as a coach, as an upline, as a resource to all of you is that one of the many things that I go ahead and I look at is I study behavior, human nature, the, the behavior of you as the agent, the behavior of the person that you're selling to. And what does that look like? Okay. So one of the things that happened back in 2020, as we all know, with COVID, everybody got locked in their house, right? So what ended up happening is, is that what you, um, so what happened is you have all of these seniors that they are only thing that they're doing is they're watching the news and the, what the news is saying, stay in your home, stay in your home, stay in your home, because if you don't, this is highly contagious. And oh, by the way, you get this odds are you're going to die because of it, or you're going to go in the hospital and you're going to die alone in a hospital bed because you're in this. That's the experience. Okay. What ends up happening is, is that that experience, and now you have a full year, year and a half where seniors are afraid to get out of their home. They can't go see people. And when they do go see people, somebody ends up sick. Now add on top of it that many of their friends and many of their other older family members and some of their younger family members died. So now you not only have it where the as human nature happens, their friends are dying off. You have this pandemic that has created this additional problem, right? And what I mean by that is, is that senior isolation is the terminology. And you can look up the many, many articles on this. But senior isolation is one of the largest problems right now in the senior population, in addition to the food solvency issue and in addition to the medical issues, and they all tie in together. So when we go ahead and we look at that, one of the things that I have identified very loudly is that seniors are going ahead. Some of them are going online. Some of them are going, and I have a woman by the name of Carol who is during all of this and, and a little bit before this, but it was really COVID that had her, she was lonely and she was sitting in her house in a condo by herself. The, the man that she sees ended up being sick and ended up having to go into custodial care living, senior living. So she was by herself in that respect. Her kids are all out of state, so they couldn't come see her. So she's in this city all by herself. So what did she do? She created, well, she she joined a local community town Facebook group and then she started posting stuff. And I adore her for it because it was hysterical, some of the things that she posted. And then the other example, because I teach by example, it's a way for me to get it to resonate with you, is that my own mother. My mother is 68. The last time that I ended up seeing her, my mom used to be a senior executive for a commercial printing conglomerate like R. Donnelly and all of that type of stuff. She recently retired. And in her group or in her generation, what, it, what ended up going ahead and she's all about her grandkids right now. She moved from Florida to North Carolina to be near her grandkids. They are less than a mile away from her. She takes them and kidnaps them every chance that she gets. 
But we sat there talking. And the first thing that she says to me is, is yeah, I, I retired. And I said, okay, that's great. Congratulations. I said, how's that going? She goes, I'm bored out of my damn mind. I said, what? I said, you should be having a blast. She goes, I'm bored out of my mind. I said, why? And she says, well, and she says, I'm retired. So now I'm not traveling all over the place. I'm not working. So I don't have a project to do. I don't like doing the consulting work because, well, that just gets stupid. I'm like, okay. And she says, well, and I play with the kids when I can play with the kids, but I can't play with the kids all the time. So what am I going to do when I don't have the kids? And I don't know anybody because I don't know how to make friends anymore because I haven't had to make friends in a bajillion years. She goes, so I'm bored out of my damn mind and I don't know where to go to make friends. And I actually sat there and let it stew for a minute, but she has a very valid point. Think about this. You're in your teens and in your 20s, you're, you know, you've got your high school friends, your college friends, you're hitting the bars, you're going out regularly because you're single and that's what you do. So you have this whole myriad of friends that you've got that you, you know, you've got to click. And then as you age, that morphs and that drops, and then you get married, and then you've got your married friends that you play with, and then you move, or, you know, life happens, and then you're focused on your kids and, you know, your family and developing that, and the next thing you know, you blink, you're 60 years old, and everybody that you know is gone, or you outgrew them, or you moved away, or you've lost contact in it. Well, you're not young enough anymore to go hit the clubs. You don't like going to bars anymore. So how the hell do you make friends? How do you, as that person, get out and connect with people? And the more that I have been teaching this is that it is, okay, let's provide a way to go ahead and do this. Let's provide an opportunity to create this environment. And that's where I'm going to go with this today. So the reason why we do this is, is that, so now I've got a whole demographic of people. They're lonely. They want to go out and they want to meet people, but they're afraid to do it by themselves. And they don't really have somebody to go do that with. And they need some place to do it, right? Going and listening to a sales pitch, you can only listen to so many of those before it gets really damn old. Add on top of it that it ends up that at those types of events, it ends up where you're going ahead and you are at a point where it doesn't turn you on anymore, right? So what I have been teaching for years is to mix social events and Medicare stuff. And that's what we're talking about today. So what do I mean by this? The first thing that I go ahead and I recommend to everybody to do is, is I want you to go ahead and create a marketing plan. Your upline should be doing this with you. I teach a whole two hour class on this that I am not going to go down that rabbit hole today. If you want that class, I'm going to do it in September. I will have that announced this weekend so that that way you can attend it. But you want to have a formal business plan. I teach a bullseye approach in the, in the business plan, which means that you drop a pin in where you live and you need to look at a radius, whether it is a half hour or an hour drive in a circle that you're driving and the counties that are all within that, that drive distance, or whether it's three to five counties. Those of you that are, that are brand new, that are trying to sell in like five, ten, five, six, seven states, you're out of your damn mind. Dial it back and do this. I teach a three-prong marketing approach, online, community, and print. I'll say it again, online, community, and print. With that, the community side is what we're focusing on today for the next hour and a half that I have you. I think that this is a two-hour class, isn't it? I think so. Hold on. It's an hour. Hour. Okay. So what ends up happening is, is that when we're looking at doing these, these events, so I have you for the next 35 minutes, what ends up happening is, is that you want to brainstorm different ideas. You want to be everywhere. You want to be the person. 
I refer to it as you want to be the I got a guy of Medicare. What does that mean to somebody? Unmute yourself and tell me what that means. When somebody is talking to their friend, they're going to say, I got a guy for you. Yep. When someone's at the pharmacy and having issues with their medications, their pharmacist says, I have a guy. Yep. I got a guy for you. Call them. You, the always, want, expert. you always want to be the first call. Yep. I want to be top of mind when somebody goes to do that referral. I need somebody to do Medicare. I got a guy for you. Call here. Many of you have gone ahead and messaged me. I need an agent in Virginia. I need an agent in California. I need an agent here. Amanda, who do you have? I got a guy for that. And immediately I will go ahead and refer you and connect you to somebody. That is what being an I got a guy is. That is what you want to be. How you do that is you get out in your communities and make that happen and be everywhere. Even when you think that it does not matter with how that is. And what do I mean by that? Some of you, I'm going to pop ideas off and you're going to be like, that makes no sense to me. Oh, but it does. So here's where we go as far as the ideas go. The first thing that I'm going to tell you is I want you, many of you, have baby notebooks because you've been at one of my in-person events. You have one that's like this. You have the Ms. Medicare ones. You have the Medicare margaritas notebooks like this. You want one of these that houses all of your marketing ideas. And what ends up happening is, is that with that particular event, what with that notebook, I want you to lock yourself in a room and I want you to be able to say or write down, do not cross anything out and judge what you wrote. I want you for 30 minutes to write down all the different places that you see a senior or somebody that is 60 plus, six zero. 30 minutes, where do you see people that are 60 plus? And I want you to put all of that in, and I want that all in that notebook. Once you have that, we're going to start with a grab. So we're going to pick three pieces, three, three items or three networking things at the top. And I'm going to go real quick with some of these. The first ones, I just got done talking about my mom, right? And that she goes ahead and she's in a space where she needs to make friends. She's a former executive and she needs to go ahead and figure out how to do this. Well, first thing that we look at is what did that demographic or what does that demographic like to do? They are not the video people, the video game people. That is not what that group did. The people that are older than her are even more of not the video game people, which means that we got to figure out different things for them to do. So if we look at it, we're talking about card games, spades tournaments, cribbage, bridge, any of that, anywhere that you can facilitate some kind of an event like that all day long. It's a great way to do it. Scrabble's a good one. Mahjong tile tournaments are a good one. Dominoes is another one, which, oh, by the way, I don't know whether or not you guys have jumped on the Devoted website lately, but Devoted has their, their dominoes for a dollar a piece for a set of dominoes. They have a whole bunch of other mar marketing uh, giveaways. They're under the promo item section that you can go ahead and buy for a dollar. And if you've been selling devoted stuff, you have a bucket of marketing money in there. Go spend it on that right now while you can. It makes sense. Humana has another bucket of money that's there. So you want to go ahead. Pinnacle tournaments are another one that you want to do. Thank you for that one. I do Bunko. So, what? Bunko. Bunko is another one. Spades is another one. Um, you want to look at board games. The other thing that these people did, which it's hysterical, but it's now getting a resurgent, roller skating, dances, swing dances, stuff like that. Bake-offs. I don't know of a senior out there that doesn't like to go ahead and have some kind of a contest about who has the best kind of pie, biscuits, brownies, or cakes. Think about it and offer a prize to the winner. Do it so that that way you are having parties um, so that they are. And I hope you guys are writing really quick because I just rattled off at least 30 different um, 
events that you can do. You can walk in and do all of these events. You can walk in and have it. Now, the question that always happens is, okay, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to spitball some of these. I decide that I'm going to have a spit, I'm going to have a spades tournament that I'm going to do in my local town. And I'm going to go ahead and do this in November one Saturday. I'm going to go ahead and have a, have a spades tournament with that. You're not doing anything other than it is sponsored by Insurance Answers Now, which is my other company that has been my beneficiary focused company. I'm going to go ahead and do it where it is a sponsored by event by Insurance Answers Now. And me as the host, I'm going to come up and say, hi, my name is Amanda Bruton. I'm the owner of Insurance Answers Now. I hope you have a great time today while we go ahead and we have the spades tournament. The winner is going to win a TV or whatever it is. Great. Just want you to know, I specialize in doing teaching people about Medicare. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. That is the only thing I am saying at this thing. My introduction, who I am, where, I, where I'm from, what I do. That is it. And then I'm going to have fun and I am going to play happy hostess with the mostest. And I am going to be as social as I can with all of that. What ends up happening? Is, is that you have it where now people start meeting with you. We all know that there's a problem with these damn unsolicited calls. If you don't know about my campaign about that, stay tuned and go and, and attend the class that I have coming up August 11th, which is next Friday. There's a whole campaign that we got going on with that. They are afraid to do anything when it comes to Medicare. So if we have the ability of going ahead and creating an environment where they are learning you, the person, you become stickier. You become somebody where the senior is more inclined to buy from somebody that is local from them than they are to buy over the phone. And I see, I know where you guys are going to go. Nah, -uh, that's not true. You know, my people are changing all the time and they're being duped and they're this and they're that. Yes, it is possible, but that is not the majority. The majority of what is happening is, is that the client or the beneficiary is seeking somebody out like you, which means you got to be visible. You be it, you're able to create an environment with them. So other ideas to go ahead and do pickleball and senior sports are a big thing. So you've got pickleball tournaments, you have botch, senior bocce ball tournaments, senior softball leagues that travel all over the states and national senior leagues, because one of my friends is actually in one. Um, you have senior golf leagues, which everybody knows. Those are all different ideas that you have that you can go ahead and be a sponsorship for their awards dinners. Be a sponsorship and be the, be the team jersey that they wear. Because then it's repetition is key and go to support it. I got a guy who can't play the softball, but he's the water boy and he hands out bottles of water to the teammates. These are all things that you want to go ahead and do when you are looking at getting in the community. Okay, so now we've got all of these different ideas. How the hell do you do this? First thing that you do is you got to find a venue, right? Right. Well, guess what becomes a hell of a lot easier for you to do when you don't have your hand out? Getting access to venues to say, I want to give back to a community is a hell of a lot easier than you going, hey, I want to sell some shit to your clients. Will you let me come in and have a conversation? They don't know you. They don't trust you. You are just like everybody else that has come in with their hand out the automatic answer is going to be no. You come in saying, hey, I want to give back to the community. I want to do this. Will you let me hold it here? Guess what happens? They're going to say yes all day long. This allows you to create that trust. The more that you have and you're able to have that trust, that snowball effect, what ends up happening is, is now you do one social event and they learn who you are. You now become quote unquote safe to them. So now you're able to do more and more activities at that location. That's why you do it. So 
going down this. So now we've got this and I'm going to pick on my local town. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to do a I'm going to do a Thanksgiving holiday feast and I'm going to have it on the 15th of November at the Twinsburg Senior Center. I've got their blessing. Now what do we do? The first thing that you want to go ahead and do and here hear me with this for the love of God and all things holy Plan your events a minimum of three weeks out. And best case scenario, you want to be two months out. So right now, you should be planning everything for October, November, and December. Now, here's why you do that. I, same example. I'm going for the November 15th. In the city of Twinsburg, they do, just like most cities, they do a quarterly bulletin which means that the bulletin goes out October 1, which means that I have to have the copy and everything else done, locked, and loaded, usually the middle of September. That's how far out that goes. The other reason, let's say you're doing dinners or a mailer or a 101 or any of that other stuff, what ends up happening is, is that you need to plan out as far as possible and do multiple events so that that way it's a, hey, you know what? You need to become your own event promoter and most agents suck at it. If you don't promote your own events and have the energy, why would anybody show up? Ask yourself that. If you go ahead, yeah, I'm doing that Medicare one-on-one, you should come. Is anyone going to jump on that with the way that I said that? The resounding is no, right? But if I come to you and say, hey, I'm having a Medicare one-on-one and it's on this date. You should come check it out and bring a friend with me. You know what? We're going to talk about how to stop those calls. We're going to talk about different other events that are in your area that will allow you to connect with other people. You know what? Give me five minutes. Check it out. You are more likely to, to come to that second example that I gave you all day long, right? But if you noticed, what did I slip in there? Bring a friend. Now let's think about this again. Most of you are overthinking this. My holiday feast thing, I can go to all the local establishments and say, hey, you want to donate? You want to raffle something off? You want to participate in some way? I think we're going to have about 50, 60 people here good because it's a, a, it's a food thing. And we all know that seniors are hungry. Would that be, you know, would you be interested in it? They'll say, yeah. You go to Amazon and spend $20 on decorations or go to the dollar store for God's sakes and get them. You go ahead and you start promoting it on social media. You start, you have it in the quarterly bulletin. You promote it yourself. You encourage all of the other places that you've said, Hey, you want in on this and to give back more often than not, they will then add into it that it allows you to have that avail that visibility. It also allows you to have it where you are seen as friend, not foe. You're not selling them anything. You're not talking about anything other than this is me and I'm giving back to the community. But oh, by the way, this is sponsored by my agency and this is what I do. What ends up happening is is that one, there's nothing Medicare being said, but watch this. At that event, when I have that conversation and as I'm networking, As somebody goes ahead and it is on them, if they come to me and go, hey, you know what? Okay, so you're doing Medicare. I have a question. You know, I have Anthem and I heard that they have a grocery benefit and I don't quite understand that. Great. Well, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and, and, you know, why don't you call me and we'll go ahead and we'll set up an appointment? Or why don't you come to my Medicare 101 event that I have next week? And then we can go into further detail on that. Do you see how you do that? You pit one event into the next, into the next, into the next. So the ones that, so let's say it's a Medicare 101 that you're having. You have the Medicare 101 and say, hey, you know what? I know that we're talking about Medicare here, but if you want to go ahead and get, you know, get involved in your community, I'm calling bingo every Thursday up at the senior center. By all means, pop in, pops on me. Have a good time. Bring a friend. We'll go ahead and we'll chat about it. 
The name of the game is networking, guys. It is not about selling. I'm going to say this again. The name of the game when it comes to Medicare is networking. It is not selling. When we go ahead and we look at this, which I know I can hear the haters now going, she does not know what the hell she's talking about. Dude, do you see the trophies behind me? Yes, I do. And I've done it for years. What ends up happening is, is that the more people that you network with, Medicare is a referral-based business. We know this, right? Your actionable is to get your phone to ring all day long. That's what you want. Your phone to ring. Because the second that that person calls you, you can interact with them, right? The second that they call you or you have a consent to contact card, you can make that happen. Controlling the energy of what you do and having a popping event, that's how you do it. So let's talk about the table and chair events. This is your retail events. This is your health fairs. It is your community wine tasting out and about community stuff that is out there, right? You do a table and chair. First thing that I'm going to tell you is, is for some of you, it is a resounding not for you. This is not a fit for you. You don't do well in that environment. And that is perfectly okay. You got to hit your sweet spot. Some of you can do retail and sit in a Diane Eagle or a Kroger or a Walmart or, or a CVS and do that all day long. And that you can write things hand over fist. But you have to do what works well for you. And the more ideas that you have about this stuff, great. Again, I can talk about this stuff for days. What you end up going ahead and doing is that when you are doing the social events, you want to advertise those. You can advertise those as, you know, if you advertise the event as a holiday dinner and it's at the senior center, most young people are not going to come to an event that's at the senior center because they know that it's for the seniors. Um, or you can have it where the, you know, let's say it's at a, at a senior co housing complex where the they control who's able to come in and out of that particular venue. But that's how you want to do it. So another comment that I have is they've done ice cream socials. Um, and assisted living places have offered um, meeting space to be able to do this stuff. This allows you, again, to get into all sorts of different ways to go ahead and, and do that. When we go ahead and we look at events and these actual table and chairs, all of you want visuals on what people have done with their tables and chairs and um, their expo tables. So there's several things that you need. Get your pens out because we're going to start putting a short list together. So what you want to go ahead and do is one, you need a tablecloth, whether it is a carrier tablecloth or whether it's your own. For those of the, you that are going, but you can't do that. If you have carrier crap, it has to be filed. That is false. Tablecloths and banners and giveaways, if they do not have product information on it, that say $300 worth of OTC or $1,800 worth of dental. That is product specific that you cannot use. But something that says United Healthcare um, Med Advantage, and that's all it says, have Medicare questions, ask me now. That pull-up stand or that pull-up sign, that is brand awareness. A blank tablecloth that has the logo for Humana on it or Devoted or the purple tablecloths for Aetna, that is brand awareness. That is compliant and you can use it. Any of the giveaways that you give, personally, you need a mix of giveaways. You need a mix that have your name and your phone number on them. And you need another mix that is just brand stuff. And when you do that, the reason why you do that is you want to have multiple brands of tchotchke crap so that it shows all the different brands that you represent. 
You want to go ahead and have stuff that has your own name and your own phone number on it so that that way you have brand recognition for yourself. Next question that I get asked all the time is, okay, well, what kind of tchotchke junk do I need? There are several things that I like that I think work. And depending on your events and what type of event that you do is going to dictate what that looks like. So I have things like many of you that came to Ms. Medicare, you got compacts that look like this, right? These cost me $3 a piece. Wasn't that expensive, but I bought them in bulk. You don't buy 100 at a time. You think long-term so that that way you know what it is. You letter openers like this that have names and phone numbers. That's another one. And it's a magnet, so it sticks on the back. These were, I think, $1.25 a piece. Pens cost you 40 cents a piece, depending on where you get them and how they do them. You want to have various things. Fairs, you want fans. You want squirt guns. You want, um, God, there's any number of things. But you need to have your own branded tchotchkes magnifying glasses a credit card magnifying glasses are always a good one to put in their um their wallets they're always good jar opener jar openers there's every bit of 80 different things that i can come up with that but for sake of time i can't go into those that gives you a hot list you can get carrier giveaways from your carrier reps and you should have a relationship with them you can get them from your upline or ask your upline if they have them, if they provide them. Some do, some don't. But the ones that are yours, you need to buy them. Some, very few carriers will co-op that. So it's an office expense that you need to do, but you need to do it. The other thing that you want to go ahead and have on your table is, is that if you're doing something that has like a fair type of environment, get one of these. Y'all know what this is, right? It's a speaker. Yep. Get one of those. Get some balloons. The tablecloth that you have, make sure that it is steamed. Spend the $20 for a steamer because nobody likes looking at a table where it looks like your tablecloth came out of a crumpled ball out of your trunk and you look like you're half-assing something. Nobody wants that. But if you go ahead and you have the polish with your table, then it's going to look good. Get yourself a Tupperware thing. That's what Trudy did for us is we have grab and goes depending on which events that I'm teaching at and what, what I'm doing. So it has the steamer in it. It has the tablecloth in it and clean your tablecloth if there's crap that gets on it. Nobody wants to see the coffee stains. Have candy at your events. Do the butterscotch uh, medallions. Get the strawberry candies that your grandma used to have. You know, the wrapped ones, you can find those online for like 20 bucks for a five pound, four, five or 10 pound bag of those. Get that type of stuff. Try to stay away from chocolate because chocolate melts. But you want to go ahead and do what I refer to as throwback candy that is reminiscent of the day that you can't find in the stores any, anymore. There are online stores that you can buy all of that stuff. Theme your stuff out. So if you're doing a something at a baseball um, or baseball theme, have hot dogs, have um, peanuts. You can, you know, the travel size peanuts that you can get, get those. They're, you know, you can buy a bag of 100, uh, 25 of those for like 10 bucks. All of those things are things that you can do. The other thing that you need to have on your table is you need to have some kind of a game. So Plinko, um, Wheel of Fortune. And then the question that people ask all the time is, is, okay, well, you do the Wheel of Fortune, but what kind of stuff do you put as surprises? What kind of prizes do you for, do for Plinko? So I'm going to rattle these off real quick. Candy's always a good one. Cleaning supplies is a good one. Hygiene items. Um, laundry detergent and fabric softener. Those are high ticket things that make sense to have so that that way, when you go ahead and you are, it's something that they need that they, that it just makes sense. And anything that you buy like that, you can buy at the dollar store and it's not going to cost you more than $15. 
Um, and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to go ahead and make happen. But you want to have those kinds of prizes. The next question that I get asked all the time was, is, well, how do I limit it so that it's only going after the, the target audience that I want? You don't. Don't be crappy like that for the $3 or the whatever that it is that it's going to cost you. Let whoever it is come and spin the wheel. If the kid wants to spin the wheel, okay, so what? Give them a candy bar. Give them a piece of candy. It's not going to kill you. And it also will show to the person that they are with, the guardian that's with them, that, okay, you're not really, you're on the up and up. Another thing to go ahead and have at events like this, sidewalk chalk. Get yourself a thing of sidewalk chalk and have, if you're, you know, and if you have, if you're somewhere and you're not in grass, but you're actually in, some, you know, something that you can color on, have a kid or a couple of kids and say, hey, kid, can you color me a picture on the sidewalk? Here's some chalk. I guarantee you that the family's going to go ahead and be like, oh my God, thank you for that. You know, so these are things that you want to go ahead and look at when you are doing these types of things. When you go ahead, um, eyeglass cleaner is another option. The magnifying glasses are always a good one. Um, several of you are saying eyeglass cleaner. You can get those at the drug mart because I know Tim uses them all the time. Those are the things that you want to go ahead and do. The speaker that I, because I got off task, this speaker that I use, you know how I said that you control the energy? That's exactly why. Your body language at any event that you do matters, okay? Everyone that is, well, everyone will tell you that if I don't actively work on it, I have an RBF, resting bitch face. And yes, you can laugh. I have to, and I'm not little. Most of you know that. I am almost six foot tall and I am heavy and I've got boobage and it is what it is. I own it. I am intimidating. My whole stature is intimidating. How I carry myself is, and I know this. You need to become self-aware of those things. You do. You need to have somebody take pictures when you're not looking and send them to you so that you know what you look like when you're not posing. You need to understand body language and what that signifies to somebody. When you cross your hands, and it, most of you have watched me teach, my hands are always open in a stance where I'm always, they are never folded like this. This basically with a face, that tells you that you're not important, that I have better things to do and I am dismissive to you. The tone of voice that you use matters. I have to catch myself on that one all day long. Watch your tone. Because what you may think is normal no tone may so not be that way. And those are the things that you want to be aware of. When you go ahead and you're doing the event, if you aren't having fun, they aren't. If you aren't approachable, they sure as hell are not going to come to you. If you're working an event and you think that you can do an event and office work at the same time, you're missing the boat and wasting your, your, damn, da your damn time. There's no reason for you to even do the event. You need to be present. Hi, how are you? Great to see you. You can talk about how the local football game went, how the local side, like with the, with the high school team. You can talk about anything. I like your shoes. Those are great earrings. Start any kind of conversation just to get somebody engaged. Now add on top of it. Going ahead and playing music. There isn't anyone out there that does not like Motown music. It's got a good energy to it. There's a good vibe. You put on a smile. You don't have to worry about somebody saying something off color. So it is kid friendly. You can groove to that and it is automatically going to put somebody in a good mood. So spend the money. Get a, uh, a Bluetooth speaker. Make sure that your phone is charged and blast that music wherever they will allow you to. And then have screw a smile on your face and do the hi, the how are you? You have to be the one to do and take the initiative. You, most of you suck at this from a peer-to-peer -peer, um, side of it. 
which is why I do so much focusing on networking at my at my conferences and at my events is because the only way to get you out of your comfort zone is for you to understand that when you do events like this, you have to be the happy hostess with the mostess. Hi, it's great to see you again. How are you? Wherever possible, you want to make them feel warm and cozy, and you want to be able to reference something from a past event if you have seen them somewhere before. Oh my God, it's great to see you, Carol. Like, you know, how's it, how have you been for the last couple of months? So that's all you have to say. Better yet, if the event has name tags so everybody has to wear one, you can cheat. <laughs> Dude, you got to do it. These are simple things that are high, high impact that will have your events being so much better than they are. But the biggest thing, and I'm almost at time that you need to be aware of, and I will probably do another couple of these, is that you've got to go ahead and be aware of your body language, the energy that you project, do as many social events mixed into the Medicare stuff as you can, and then also have it where if you're doing consent to contacts or things like that, if it's a social event, I can hand out business cards all I want. I'm not going to be the spritzer girl with it. And in closing, I will go ahead and reference that for you so that you know what I mean. No one likes the spritzer girl. Many of you are older enough to old enough to remember walking into a walking into a department store during the holidays, and there's the chick at the end of the escalator that is waiting to make eye contact with you and spray you with a god awful perfume with the hopes that you're going to buy it. And usually, most of you will acknowledge the fact that you will do everything that you can to walk out of her vicinity, not make eye contact with her, and hope to God that she does not set her sights on you and you're able to go shopping and be on your married way. Don't be the spritzer girl. What you want to be, because that spritzer girl is out for themselves. They're out to pitch and sell and make things happen and make their numbers and make their commission. Do not be like that. What you want to say to yourself is this. And the bad analogy is one that I hope sticks. Be the Walmart greeter. You guys walk through, walk past a Walmart greeter, a Sam's Club greeter, Costco, whatever it is. You have somebody standing in that doorway that is saying, hi, thanks for shopping at XYZ place, right? And you can walk by them all day long and you don't have any, there's no anxiety or limited anxiety to that. And you go about your day and it's fine and everything's good and you have a great experience. You want to be that person. You want to be that person where they can have their questions. They can, you can walk and somebody has a warm and fuzzy about it. The one thing that I try damn hard with when it comes to my groups, I make a point to go ahead and say when somebody posts and says, hi, you know what? I'm new here. I try as best I can to acknowledge them and say, welcome. It's good to have you here. Thanks for playing. Here's some things that you need to know. When somebody comes to an event of mine, I make tr I try to hit and touch every single person that has been at that event and say, hi, thank you so much for coming. It's so good to see you. I want you to be seen and heard. Everybody feels that way. And when you are working in the senior environment, that cannot be any more important if you tried. So because I am at, at time, I just blasted you with a ridiculous amount of a starter of ideas and things. I hope that this spun your wheels pretty good with different ideas. I hope that you attend uh, other events that I have. You can find them at the MedicareAnswersNow.com website, and you can click into the, the training um section to find the calendar. You can also find the events all throughout Facebook. Um, and I'm going to close this. So this should give you enough homework to think about different events and how to implement them to get you going pretty good. Um, so have a great one, guys. Happy AEP if I do not see you. And I hope you have a great weekend. So thank you. Thank you.